you know the real HU, the Mecca, the number one HBCU in the nation. Wh what does your say? What does your say? How university? Some slight, some slight. <laughs> Welcome back, to welcome back to my channel. So as you see in this title, I'm going to be explaining the process of how I got into Howard University. I know this video is a long overdue and I apologize for that, but I feel like I haven't sat down and talked to you in a while and school is sadly approaching and I want to help you all out. If how are your dream school, I want to help you all get into it and I want to use some tips and my college process and all the good jazz. So, before I get into this video, please give it a like, don't forget to comment and subscribe. Turn on post notifications because I'll be uploading on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And with that, listen to the video. Alright, so I'm going to start off with my stats. So, I know y'all all know how University, the mega, the number one HBCU in the whole nation, and the real HU. I know y'all know this. So, I'm really not even going to go into it. But I know that this year they didn't accept as many people as they do over like normal years. And I know like their cost per year is like 40 something K. And uh, in scholarships you might get like half or some, like it really depends. But starting with my stats, I'm going to start with my GPA. And I did do like a college tip video a couple, maybe it was a month ago. A while back so check out that video if you want to go into like detail of like my stats and all that type of stuff that has a really good tip on college process but my GPA was a 3.74 I think that's what I finished with and uh, I took some AP classes and some honors classes so at my school there's a um there is no class ranking is an unweighted GPA so I can't give y'all those types of answers just because my school doesn't participate in that but basically my GPA was 3.7 I did take standardized testing I took the SAT and ACT so many times and I put this on everything I would never take the test again ever ever you have paid me big time money for me to take the test over again because I think it's a waste of time but I did test optional when I applied for Howard so when I talk about the college process, I'm going to get deeper into that. But if you know that your scores are not strong, there is no shame, nothing wrong with going test optional. My SAT was like a 1050 the second time around. The first time I got a 950. And my ACT, I got 19s for two times and then I got a 21 my third time so i was goaded because i was like a 21 is like standard it was just like it was acceptance of michigan state xavier and howard might have been like a 22 23 or whatever but it was around the same range i'm like you know what they're gonna get 21 but since i wasn't confident in my scores i did not send them in and when i get into the whole process i think there was like a big factor that um helped me get into howard but yeah those were my stats and my scores they're really on like the low spectrum so that is the reason why i did not turn them in and just decided to skip it but i will like recommend that you guys should actually take the test like just try it out it really doesn't hurt try it out and see what you get I took studying classes, I looked over the books, and information just did not get to me, it didn't help me. That's different for everybody, so I can't say that if you go through the classes and the books that it won't help you, it just didn't help me, and that's why my scores were so bad, because I didn't, I don't think I put it really in the time to study for it, because I just had that, not a negative mindset, but I just knew that that test wasn't going to give me a 36 or like a 1600. I just knew. Like, I'm not that type of kid. So, I really didn't put 100% of my effort into those tests. But I will say that you guys should really try it out. Study a little bit for it. Like, review material and get familiar with it. Because, I mean, 
it's just good to have the experience to do it and just, you know, get it done. So those are my stats, and now I'm gonna move on to the application process. So I use Common App, which I would assume a lot of you guys who are gonna be seniors or juniors or whatever have seen Common App know what it is if you don't know what it is it is like a website where they have all of the schools and there's just one common application that you fill out for those schools and basically the information is the same general background information school information academic information then you have to get like recommendation letters which are very important some of them are like required for your counselor or advisor or whatever and then some are like a teacher or two teachers something like that so that's really like the general gist of Common App. And I use it for all of my schools. Some schools are on there. I can't tell you which ones. But some schools aren't on there. So you just have to use like their own application on the website, which I think Howard has their own application too. Because they ask you like some specific questions later on that pertain to Howard University. But I used Common App for my entire process and I filled out all of my information. I left nothing blank. I even put in like the classes that I took through 9th through 12th grade. It might ask you that. And there were some other things that my counselor might have just filled in for me that I didn't know the information about. But I would definitely recommend using Common App because it keeps track of the applications that you have done, have not done. It keeps track of like due dates, which are very important. And it's just easier than like going to all these different college websites and having to create passwords and applications and you just get confused so I would definitely recommend using Common App because it will 100% get you organized and help you through your college process. So for Howard University I applied early action I was on it ready to go and I'm, I'm gonna tell you all the story of how I did the process so when I was applying for these colleges in like October I think maybe like September 2, I really wasn't focused on Howard. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a good school. I heard about it. I didn't know too much about it. And my main focus was on Xavier University in Louisiana or Michigan State University. And I think I just had an epiphany. When I got into Howard, I'm like, oh my God, like I really got into Howard. Like big people used to go here and like, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be one of them, but like I got into it. And yeah, I just literally changed my mind, which I do often, but I really didn't think I was going to change my mind on like a big decision like going to college. I changed my mind, said I'm going to Howard, bada bing bada boom. I did early action just for, just because like I was ready. I had all of my information, like all of my recommendation letters ready and I wanted to get like a quicker response and doing a regular decision. So I would recommend if you are prepared and are ready and have all your stuff together, do early action. It doesn't hurt to do early action. And I think that it shows a little bit of interest. Like those were the top, not top people, those were the first people that they looked at and they were like interested and ready to go into this process, early action. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing regular decision, but I would just 100% recommend early action if you just want to get like a quicker response. So that's what I did. I can't tell you the specific date of early action, but it was around October. So that can give you like a landmark of like, you need to be really preparing during the summer. Give yourself like the little fall season to get yourself together and then like, boom, hit those applications because deadlines and timing is crucial. Um, I think that the entire college process of doing these applications was like very easy to me because I was doing it on a common app and it was just kind of like straightforward. The questions were simple. Um, along with your application, there's going to be the essay prompts. So they're range from like, how did COVID affect your year? What is your favorite book? What is your favorite season or summer? I mean, like, it was just so many different, like, random questions on the Common app that are just, like, generic prompts. And I believe for whatever school you apply to, it's going to be the same type of prompt. I did that. I can't tell you which prompt I fill out. It might have been like what was my favorite book or something. And um, I just sh wrote my essay. I would really recommend to show personality in all of your essays because I think that's what makes people stand out and what makes the entire process unique to you. Because I don't think anybody wants to read a generic essay that's kind of like blah 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 straightforward. I mean you want to put some 
you want to throw some pizzazz in it and really reflect who you are. So definitely show personality um, in your essays and the, even in the prompt ones or even like in the short answer questions. Just give it all flavor because that is what's going to make you stand out. For the big essay, I would say, um, that you can submit to Howard. I think this was kind of like a personal statement. Before I started this entire process, I always heard people that were before me and when they did their essays, they always used a story or something that was personal to them to give to the count a mission represent representative or whatever, you know, how to give a little sympathy. Now, if some of y'all know my situation in the past, yeah, I took the hot ticket and wrote about something very sympathetic to me, something really traumatic to me. And I went to town. I was writing. It was, it, I mean, and my whole essay was not even about trauma. It was kind of like overcoming the struggles that I've had in my life and then like how I'm going to put those bad times to the present and how it's kind of like helped me, how it will help me and stuff like that. That's basically what I did for my essay. And again, show personality, show flavor because you want it to be a reflection of yourself. Um, and honestly, like everybody doesn't choose the sad route. I mean, like there's people who write about what's their favorite food. Like you could honestly write anything for your essay, but I would, Definitely make sure that it has some type of meaning and you know reflects you in a great light and something that you're comfortable writing about. Don't feel forced to write about something sad because you wanna you wanna get in so bad. I just feel like you should write something that you're proud of and that you think represents yourself well. Um and there might have been I'm pretty sure there was like another essay portion where kind of like why did you wanna go to Howard? why did you choose your major and um at the time i really didn't know much about howard but i knew or i know that they do have a really good medical school and a really good biology program and that is what i want to get into when i go into howard so i reflected on that reflected on my love for science and medicine and um I reflected on one of my top priorities when I was looking for any school was that I didn't want to feel like I was just a number. I wanted to have a relationship with my teachers and with my peers in the classroom. So um, I know that Howard doesn't have like huge class sizes compared to like a PWI. So I don't know that. I touched on a lot of different things that even if you don't know, you can research. Um, you know, why does someone want to go to Howard or why does someone want to go to HBCU? I feel like it's all the same. And you could research it and put it together and put it in the essay and bada bang bada boom you're done. So those were the essay portions. Um, I'm really not a great essay writer. So just take your time with it. Think about it. And definitely have somebody take the time out to read it. I, I really wouldn't recommend you write something and you just like automatically submit it. You should definitely write something and have somebody review it because that's just something that's good to do if you are a junior watching this video then i would definitely recommend you can get involved in school get involved in clubs and again i went deeper into this in my last video when i talked about colleges but that was basically my process i got everything done i don't think i did it in the summer but i probably did it around august and then like continued on and then like if you're gonna fill out your FAFSA, make sure you do it on time, not late. Make sure deadlines are like set, due dates are met because that's really important and it shows how diligent and responsible of a person you are when you make your deadlines or even get things done early. Enjoy the process of waiting because Howard had a very crucial waiting time. I really wasn't sitting by the phone like, oh my God, am I gonna get it or not? But like, I was just kind of like, well, black at the time, obviously. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was everything that I did for my process. And it was really straightforward, really simple. If anyone needs any tips on essays, I can really help y'all with that. Or any questions that I did not answer in this, in this video, I can make a part two. Or I can answer them in the chat for you guys. I would really just say stay calm, 
do not overstress yourself because that's, that's just not good you know give it to the man upstairs and he will, will work it out for you be on your stuff make sure you have all of your stuff turned in all of your stuff right i i'm a little bit of a perfectionist so i made sure that you know i wasn't missing any details nothing was astray or wrong um and again remember you will be great no matter what school you go to if you get rejection letters in the mail which i got a ton of them not a ton but from them ivy leagues there wasn't ready to handle all of this but anyways getting a rejection letter is not bad even if it is your dream school it's not bad because you can apply later in the year you can transfer i mean like there's literally so many options so i guess what along with that i would say do not give up there's always a way for you to do literally anything that you want to do in life and yeah i really do hope this helped you guys see like a range of perspective of my stats my um application process and all that jazz i hope you all enjoyed this video please give it a like today to comment and subscribe turn on post notifications because i'll be uploading on monday wednesday and friday and with that thanks for watching lisa babes